is before this distinguished assembly of the democratically elected representatives of the people of Kenya to discharge my constitutional function under Article 132.1c. The occasion requires me to give an account to the people of Kenya the measures taken by their government under my leadership and to give full expression and effect to the soul of our constitutional dispensation by implementing the national values and principles of governance set out in Article 10 of our Constitution. I have a substantial report to give on the progress made in fulfilling this solemn covenant and that the journey of transforming Kenya for the benefit of present and future generations is fully underway. It is positive effect have also begun to bear fruit across many sectors of our national endeavor from the grassroots all the way to this capital of Nairobi. On the 13th September 2022 last year, when I took office, I undertook to ensure the urgent transformation of our economy and to stop and reverse the negative trends of runaway unemployment, yawning inequality, and widespread poverty which have denied Kenyans their dignity and extinguished their dreams. The mass appeal of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda was due in large part to the fact that its development and articulation as well as its content and implementation strategy represented our national values in action. It was inclusive democratic, committed to social justice, and the protection of the marginalized. Our commitment to bring the national values and principles of governance to life in order to significantly enhance the well-being of every individual and promote the unity, stability, security, and development of our country began long before the last election and will endure well beyond our time. It has been my manifest intention to live up to all the commitments set out in the plan and despite enormous challenges and tremendous difficulties, we have made encouraging progress in a positive direction. This has not only vindicated our philosophy of inclusive transformation in pursuit of shared prosperity, but it has also increased our confidence that we are on the right path and shall, in due course, deliver the transformation of our nation in full. It is important for us to point out that we began the implementation of our mandate to transform Kenya's economy from the bottom up under extreme difficult circumstances. Not to excuse failure or to justify inability or omission to, the ne to do the necessary work. Not at all. Rather, we do it to emphasize the significance of our progress, underscore the possibility of transformation under daunting conditions, and express well-founded confidence that when sufficient progress is made, we shall do much more and go much further in delivering the Kenya we want for our generations and also for posterity. In our plan, we identified three primary challenges, external shocks, fiscal distress, and structural imbalance that heavily strained our economy, causing nationwide difficulty. The COVID-19 pandemic, coupled with global supply chain disruptions and geopolitical conflicts, significantly raised inflation and interest rates, adversely affecting our economy while low agricultural investment and a prolonged drought led to food shortages and made Kenya a net importer of food in a volatile international market. It was under conditions of such ex extreme difficulty that the people of Kenya entrusted us with the responsibility of simultaneously generating effective solutions to immediate problems 
providing a credible pathway to stability in the medium term and undertaking long-term structural transformation of our economy, but in a manner which paid attention to the needs and aspirations of Kenyans, especially those at the bottom of the pyramid. The transformation of our economy is not only desirable and important, it is also necessary and urgent. And the people of Kenya have made this clear at every opportunity. Our duty as leaders is to listen keenly and comply with the people's wishes. Kenyans want to proceed in a new direction and demand a new conversation that puts ordinary Kenyans, the Mamamboga security, well-being, interests and aspirations at the front and center of all policy and governance discourse. Citizen freedoms and fundamental rights lie at the heart of enterprise and democracy. Accordingly, our governance system must be fit for purpose, able to protect people and their belongings, safeguard freedom, facilitate democracy, and promote market efficiency. To do this, law enforcement must be robust, judicial integrity, efficiency and independence, absolute and the right to the protection of law, non-negotiable and impartial. Our police service and other actors in the justice law and order chain, including the judiciary, must therefore be professional, independent, impartial, effective, and inspired by national values and principles of governance. In keeping with our promise to the people of Kenya, I signed important instruments on my first day on duty. Among them, the delayed appointments of six judges to the Court of Appeal as recommended by the Judicial Service Commission. Enhanced allocation through this house to the judiciary by 3 billion Kenyan shillings. Designated the Inspector General who is sitting in this house as the accounting officer of the National Police Service to enhance police independence and subsequently appointed a task force led by the former Chief Justice David Maraga to review the terms and conditions of service of members of the National Police Service. This was necessary, members, so that we can cement our place as a nation on the firm foundation of the rule of law. Together with the people of Kenya, we have changed everything. We have transformed the national political conversation from personalities to issues, from regional or ethnic largesse to opportunities for all our young people, from divisions to inclusion, and from status quo to the bottom-up economic transformation for shared prosperity. To date, Kenyans remain fully seized of the agenda, engaging vigorously and with unrelenting focus on expanding agricultural productivity to deal with the cost of living, <coughs> affordable housing to create enterprise, jobs, and dignified uh, dwellings, universal health coverage for a healthy, productive nation, and digital transformation to create e-commerce, create jobs, and make government efficient, effective, and accessible, especially government services. Also, fintechs, including the Hustler Fund, have benefited from the space around technology and the digital transformation. By virtue of the internal coherence of our constitutional dispensation, national values and principles of governance set out core directive precepts whose observance induces every decision and action with implicit constitutionality to the extent that our plan is aligned with Article 43 
the implementation of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda is a program to intensify the actualization of national values with a special focus on citizens at the bottom of the pyramid. From the first day in office, we have worked hard every day to move our agenda forward amid many challenges to forge a path in the direction of progress. This is the essence of our commitment to make progress despite challenges and move forward by overcoming great obstacles. We must never